Hello everyone, welcome to Learning with Friends. Today we are going to discuss linear inequalities in one variable. What exactly do we mean by an inequality? When we say x is equal to y, that is an equation. But when we say x is less than y, x is less than or equal to y, x is greater than y, or x is greater than or equal to y, we call it an inequality. Unlike linear equations, inequalities have an infinite number of solutions. For example, consider the inequality x less than 0. This inequality will be true for all non-positive values of x. That is, for all values of x that are negative, neither positive nor zero. Let's look at how inequalities are represented graphically. Consider the inequality x greater than minus 2. On the number line, we represent this inequality as starting from minus 2 and going up to infinity. There's a hollow circle at minus 2 to indicate that minus 2 itself is not a solution to this inequality. Consider another inequality, minus 3 is less than equal to x is less than equal to 2. This inequality when we represent on the number line, it starts from minus 3 on the left hand side and goes up to 2 on the right hand side. Here minus 3 and 2 have closed circles because these are part of the solution to the inequality. Let's look at the rules for solving linear inequalities. The first rule, a constant can be added or subtracted from both sides of the inequality without altering the sign of the inequality. What exactly do we mean by that? To help us understand, consider the inequality 4x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 95. Solving an inequality means isolating the variable x. To do that, we would have to add plus 5 to both sides of the inequality and we would get 4x is greater than or equal to 95 plus 5 or 4x is greater than or equal to 100. Let's look at the second rule. A positive constant can be multiplied with or divided from both sides of the inequality without altering the sign of the inequality. If we were to continue our previous example where we had 4x greater than or equal to 100, to isolate x, we would have to divide both sides of the inequality by 4 so that on the left hand side we have x and on the right hand side we get 100 upon 4 which is 25. Therefore, x is greater than or equal to 25 is the solution for this inequality. However, what happens when we have to divide or multiply a negative constant? That brings us to rule 3. When a negative constant is multiplied with or divided from both sides of the inequality, the inequality changes its sign. What do we mean by that? Consider the inequality 5 minus 2x is less than 13. To solve this and isolate x, we first subtract 5 from both sides of the inequality. So that on the left hand side, we have minus 2x and on the right hand side, we have 13 minus 5, which is 8. So that our inequality becomes minus 2x is less than 8. To isolate x further, we would have to divide both sides of the inequality by minus 2. So that on the left hand side, we are left with x and on the right hand side, we are left with minus 4. But remember, because we are dividing by a negative quantity, the inequality will change its sign from less than to greater than. So that the inequality will now be x greater than minus 4. Since we wanted to solve for x, that is also the solution for the inequality. Let's now look at a word problem. Ralph works as a bricklayer and charges a flat $50 fee per day. In addition, he charges $5 for every brick he lays. If Steve wishes to engage Ralph's services for three days for a budget no greater than $1,200, what is the maximum number of bricks that Steve can employ Ralph? To, lay. to solve this word problem, we first need to design the inequality around it. 
Let the total number of bricks that Ralph will lay for Steve be x. Then the fee charged for laying x bricks would be 5 multiplied by x or 5x since for every brick that Ralph lays, he charges $5. The flat fee for 3 days would be 3 multiplied by 50 or $150 since per day flat fee is $50. Thus, the total fee payable to Ralph is 5x plus 150. Now, we are told that Steve's budget is no greater than $1200, which means that Steve can spend at most $1200 on the brick laying. That means that 5x plus 150, which is the total fee that Ralph will command, should be less than or equal to 1200 because that is exactly how much Steve can pay. To solve this inequality, we need to isolate x. To do that, we subtract 150 from both sides of the inequality so that on the left hand side we have 5x and on the right hand side we have 1200 minus 150 which is 1050. Thus we now have 5x is less than or equal to 1050. To further isolate x, we divide both sides of the inequality by 5 so that we have x is less than or equal to 1050 divided by 5, which is 210. Thus, we notice that x can get a maximum value of 210, or the maximum number of bricks that Steve can employ Ralph to lay for his budget is 210. Let's do a quick check of our answer. The cost of work for 3 days was 3 into 50, which is 150, and the cost of laying 210 bricks would be 5 into 210, which is 1050. Therefore, the total cost becomes 150 plus 1050 or 1200. That is exactly the amount of money that Steve can contribute towards this project. And therefore, we have got the right number of bricks. That's all for now, friends. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to our channel Learning with Friends. Also let us know in the comment section what other math topics you would like us to discuss in future videos. See you next time.